Welcome to episode 37 of the Self Care 101 podcast with your host, Pooja K. McClymont. Thank you so much for listening today. In this episode, I'm going to talk about why you keep losing interest in what you do. This show is inspired by one of my new clients from the Confidence Club. I'd sent some questions to all the new members about, you know, what they want to work on, what their goals are, what their challenges are, how I can help, what they're bringing to the table. And one of the challenges that my clients faced is that they keep losing interest in what they do. They're losing interest in staying focused. So I thought, why not put something together just for them? Because you know what? You're probably going through it as well if you're listening to this show, so it might be helpful. Now, there's a tool we use in wellbeing coaching called the Wellbeing Wheel, and on there is a spoke for spirit. Now, this can pertain to your spiritual practices, but essentially it's talking about purpose. Why do we do what we do? When you start losing interest in what you do, It can be deflating and demotivating. Your inner critic, look, your inner critic can have an absolute field day at this time. So what I wanted to do in this episode is cover a few reasons as to why you might be flailing and provide some tips to help you figure things out. So let's start with why you lose interest in what you do. Now, when it comes to work, we are influenced by the templates provided to us as children which is then reinforced as we get older. Whether you've grown up in an affluent home or a less affluent one, you must work hard will be heard a lot, right? If you remember a time when you were a kid, you were probably told by authority figures, guardian figures, you know, we're talking about teachers, parents, etc. Oh, you've got to really work hard, you know, to basically win at life. Now, In theory, there's nothing wrong with working hard. You know, I would be advocating that if you are working towards a goal, there's going to be work that has to be done. Action is the most important part of achieving a goal. But the problem with that statement is that it doesn't let us know that we can actually enjoy the work we end up doing as adults. Now, a lot of these influences are derived from inverted commas, mistakes our parents may have made. And therefore, they just don't want the same for us. Okay, so what they're trying to do is say, look, you know, if you work really hard, now you can reap the results as you get older, we would, you know, would have liked to have done the same thing, or that's what they have done. And they want the same for us. So it's understandable where that's coming from. It's it is actually coming from a place of love. But the bit about enjoying your work, that one, that tends to disappear because it's like if you want to enjoy your work, you need to be doing something creative and that will be frowned upon because how are you going to pay the bills if you're being creative? Obviously, we live in a very different world now. The types of careers that we can have are completely different to say 10, 20 years ago. So you know, understanding that there is a different environment that we're living in, but that working hard can also mean enjoying your work. I think that's a really important thing to focus on here. So if you do keep losing interest in what you do, if you can't find that joy that makes you wake up in the morning, you're going to consistently struggle with focusing on the things you're trying to work on. Now let's get a little bit scientific. Our brains influence us losing interest. Now, how does that do it? How does the brain do this? The human brain is hardwired for negativity. It's part of what has helped us survive since our cave dwelling ancestors were on the lookout for creatures that could kill us. Did you know that whenever you have a thought, your brain releases chemicals and we have about typically about 60,000 thoughts a day. Now, that's a lot of chemicals flooding our system. Whenever you have a sad, hopeless or worthless thought, your brain releases chemicals that make you feel bad. Now on the flip side, hopeful, loving, happy thoughts, they release chemicals that make you feel good. So whenever we have a negative thought, such as when a project gets difficult, we start to tell ourselves that we're not good enough. Now, finding ways to control your brain and these negative thoughts, that can be totally monumental in helping you not lose interest in what you do. I want to touch on something with NLP. So NLP is the study of excellence and it's basically 
It's the practice of retraining our brains to do what we say we want to do. And one of the best theories used in NLP when people are looking to achieve success is something called modeling. Now, NLP modeling, this is basically the definition, is the art of making explicit the set of differences present in someone who is excellent at a given activity compared with someone who is mediocre at the same activity. NLP modeling can be used to capture patterns of excellence present in anyone in any context. So let me give you an example. I like playing tennis. (laughs) I'm laughing because my husband thinks I'm terrible at playing tennis, but that's not the point. I just enjoy it. But if I wanted to be a tennis pro, I've got such a choice of athletes, tennis players, professional tennis players to model myself on. So let's take one of the best, Serena Williams. Now say I want to play tennis at the same level as Serena Williams. In order for me to do that, I need to study what she does to be as excellent as she is. So what is her routine? How much dedication does she put into her day to working out and playing tennis? And how much off the court work does she do? How much in the court work does she do? What kind of workouts does she do when she goes to the gym? What kind of food is she eating? What kind of, I don't know, purpose level work is she doing? Is she doing meditation? Does she walk? Does she sit and chant Orm? What is she doing? So when a client comes to me because they keep losing interest in what they do, I like to use this exercise to understand their experiences and it also helps me understand which barriers are holding them back. Well, essentially it helps us both understand what's holding them back. Now for the client, they might be able to model a time in their own lives or they can discover whom they might want to model themselves on. So it doesn't necessarily have to be somebody else's behavior you want to model on. It could be something that you've done in your own life at a time where you've succeeded at something. I mean, to be honest with you, if it's if you're able to model an experience that you've actually gone through, you're a lot more likely to stick with it because you've done it. But (laughs) I was just thinking, actually, on the other hand, it could also enforce inner critic because if you can't achieve what you're trying to work on based on modeling your past behavior, you might then feed yourself you know, lots of self-doubt and stuff. So it can go either way. But essentially, if you've got a very clear goal that you're trying to work on, if it's a very specific project, you can use modeling as a tool to basically make it happen. So one of the exercises you could actually do yourself right now (laughs) is if you describe a time in your life when something went well and you completed it, What's important about this task is to know what was actually happening at that time that helped you to not lose interest. You've got to go into the details. You've got to describe the environment, the people around you, the task you were completing, your purpose for completing that task. Because essentially, if you completed that task, that means your drive, your motivation was really, really strong towards that purpose. Now, if a client doesn't have a reference point, which does happen, I would possibly then explore the limiting beliefs or childhood templates that may be hardwired within them. Now, if you find yourself in this position, if you find this task really difficult to do, it might be helpful to seek some counselling to work through your limiting beliefs before trying to rewire your brain. Now, I've put together a couple of reasons as to why you're probably losing interest in what you're trying to do. And these are the ones that have been presented in my coaching practice so far. So it's not an exhaustive list. It's a very short list, but these are things that have been present with my own clients. So I feel like I can obviously talk about it. So the first one is joy. You don't associate success with joy. Now, without joy, you won't want to wake up in the morning and work towards your goal. You're going to struggle to stay motivated and you're going to entertain negative thinking more easily. So this comes back to my first point at the top of the show, which is about working hard also means enjoying to work hard. So you enjoy the process as much as you enjoy the end result. 
And when you're focusing on your outcome, it's basically, so you have a goal in mind, let's say, I don't know, you want to, you want to set up a business. Now, when you're setting up a business, you need to create a business plan. Generally, that's what you would need to create to get clear on what you're wanting to do today, how long it's going to take you to get to the next stage, the next stage, the next stage, and then obviously what your overall vision is for your business. Do you want it to be an Amazon big corporate company or are you looking to make a hundred grand in it every year, year on year, so that you can sustain the lifestyle you want? Once you get clear on what your picture is of that particular goal, like I say in this example, I'm just saying to start a new business, you've then got to look at the outcomes of achieving that goal. Because you could achieve the 100k goal in a year, but what does that goal afford you? So the goal is that you've achieved the 100k, but what does it actually give you? So outcomes could be, you don't have to worry about money. You can buy the house that you want to buy. You will feel more free regarding money and therefore you'll be able to do more fun stuff. If within that plan you're hiring somebody, then that means that you're going to be reducing the amount of time that you're actually working. If that's desirable for you, why is it desirable for you? If you have kids, it might be because you want to spend more time with kids. So what we're saying here is that When you focus on the outcome, that's going to bring you more joy within the actual process of getting to your goal. Because without joy, without enjoying the process, once you actually achieve that 100K goal or whatever it is for your business, you're going to not feel happiness for achieving it. You're just going to go, oh, okay, doesn't feel like I felt it would feel. But if you have outcomes that you're looking towards, once you get to that 100K, you're going to be like, oh, okay, so this is what I need to do in order to make 100k. This is what I need to do to sustain it. Now I can halve my work for the year. You get where I'm going with this. The second one is passions. Defining your passions honestly can be such a wonderful exercise and you can do this for anything to be honest, not just this particular episode. But being passionate, now this is different to being good at something. Passion is what can drive you to succeed. So make sure whatever you're working towards, you are passionate about it. Now, motivation is the next one. And staying motivated, look, I know it's super hard. It takes consistency, time and effort to achieve a goal. So to stay motivated without joy or passion is going to make it a lot harder. So if you can address the joy and passion for what you're working towards, it's going to keep you motivated. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to have bad days. Of course you are. It's, you know, life you're going to have bad days. But motivation is the basically the act of getting back on the bike and carrying on so that you allow for bad days to happen. It's part of the process. You accept them, but the next day or a couple of days later, you can still pick up and carry on as you were. The next one I want to talk about is support. This is a really big one. It might even be, it might actually elicit a whole episode for itself. (laughs) The people you surround yourself with will affect your success. Now, there's a theory out there, a lot of business owners talk about this, about sharing your journey with other people. Sometimes it's better not to. And the reason why is because they can often criticize you but it's usually disguised as something else. So it might be judgment, it might be passive aggression, or it might even be projection. Now with projection, we're talking about if they see that you're doing something, you're changing your life, you're making waves, you're enjoying it, and their lives are exactly the same, and they have no intention of changing it, there can be a bit of projection there, a bit of jealousy, a bit of, oh, so you're doing this, but why are you doing this? But then how are you going to pay your bills? Well, how, but, you know, you've got bills to pay. I thought you wanted to buy a house. You can't get a mortgage if you've just set up a company. You need two years worth of accounts. That's all projection. So be aware of those who are around you, because this is a really important element to your success. Spend time or only share your journey for whatever you're working on with those people who are going to lift you up, who are going to be there to support you on a good day, on a bad day, and they are just going to continuously lift you up. They're the people to surround yourself with. If you don't have anyone in your life, find them. 
And the final one is purpose. Now, discovering your purpose, look, it's not an easy task. You could spend your entire life searching for it. But if you can take the view of having purpose for each specific area of your life, like love, work, children, you're going to find it a lot easier to enjoy your life and most importantly, not lose interest in what you do. Because if you have a purpose, if you have a really, really strong reason for achieving a particular goal, you are more likely to achieve it than if you don't have purpose for it. I mean, we could be as simple as taking a shower in the morning. Why do we take a shower in the morning? To be clean, to feel fresh, to start the day. That makes you feel good. You feel that you have accomplished something and you can get on with your day. I use the shower as the most simplest example because sometimes, especially right now, it's difficult to motivate ourselves to do the simplest of tasks because everything is so uncertain and you don't know where you are. But if you can apply purpose to every single thing that you do, you're more likely to keep doing it. Ultimately, losing interest in what you do is rooted in having purpose. So have a clear goal to pursue. Have a clear reason for doing what you do. It's that statement that's going to provide you with the drive, the motivation, the determination and the tenacity to not give up. Thank you for listening to the Self Care 101 podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love it if you would subscribe, rate and review so that other people like you can find the show. For more tips and tricks, you can follow me on the socials at Frankly Coaching or visit my website to find out more about my coaching programs and how to work with me at franklycoaching.com. Talk to you soon.